Hello fellow travelers and hello fellow aviation enthusiasts. Today we're talking about a fatal accident that happened back in 2015, where a pilot closed himself in the cockpit and committed suicide, killing 150 people. We're talking about cockpit safety and security, answering questions like, can a pilot have a walk in the aircraft and stretch his legs? Can pilots take videos on board or use their phones? We'll show you where they eat and drink in the cockpit while operating the flight. We'll also get technical and explain the no contact period and what is a sterile cockpit. Today you'll learn a lot and we'll bust some myths together. And last but not least, we'll talk about a story that saved an Emirates flight from a potential disaster thanks to an Emirates cabin crew that took initiative and violated the above rules. Breaking the rules is a must sometimes, if you know it'll eventually save hundreds of lives. Oh, and we'll also talk about a few games and tricks pilots play to us cabin crew while we're at work. Before we get technical, let's give you some ingredients to work on. This is an aircraft. The front, also known as forward, or FWD in aviation terminology, is where the cockpit is located. The cockpit is where the pilots operate the aircraft. It's also known as flight deck. Right behind is the aircraft cabin, where passengers, cargo, and rest of staff are located. The back of the aircraft is called aft, or AFT in aviation terminology. Since the New York World Trade Center terrorist attack on 9-11, cockpits have been separated by the cabin with a physical bulletproof three-bolted door. I remember back in the days, I could walk right in the cockpit with my dad and say hi to the pilots. Well, those days are gone. But terrorist attacks aren't the only reason for airlines to adopt high security and safety standards. Pilots and cabin crew have a big responsibility on board. All lives depend on the actions of just a handful of people. If a pilot chooses to sabotage the controls in the flight deck, or a cabin crew decides to open an armed door while takeoff, it'd be a catastrophe. An example of this is German Wings Flight 9525 from Barcelona to Dusseldorf, which crashed in the French Alps. The investigation determined that the crash was caused deliberately by the co-pilot Andreas Lubitz and had previously been treated for suicidal tendencies and declared unfit to work by his doctor. Pilot Lubitz kept this information from his employer and instead reported for duty. Shortly after reaching cruise altitude and while the captain was out of the cockpit, he locked the cockpit door and crashed on a mountainside. A German wings flight reaches cruising altitude of 38,000 feet. Cockpit cameras show the two pilots are talking happily. The captain leaves for a quick toilet break. On his return, First Officer Lubitz, in the cockpit, locks the door and doesn't reply to the captain's interphone calls. Cockpit cameras show First Officer Lubitz clearly ignoring the captain outside trying to get in. The captain outside tries to override the locks with a security code, which in turn is denied by the First Officer Lubitz in the cockpit. 10.29 Two minutes later, First Officer Lubitz turns the altitude knob and initiates a descent towards the French Alps. The captain outside realizes the plane is descending quickly, so he starts shouting and slamming the door in a desperate attempt to break open the bulletproof door. 10.40 After several tries, one can hear shouts and cries from the passengers and crew seconds before impact. Increase climb. Caution. Terrain. Pull up. Too low. Terrain. Terrain. 150. 40. 30. 20. 10. In response to the incident of the co-pilot's involvement, aviation authorities in some countries implemented new regulations that require the presence of two authorized personnel in the cockpit at all times. I know for sure that Ryanair, a low-cost carrier based in Europe, already adopted this procedure. At no time given would a pilot remain alone and unattended in the cockpit. German Wings and other German airlines, though, dropped this rule in 2017, which in my opinion makes absolutely no sense. It's easy to lie about your psychological state. Having someone else in the cockpit other than just a pilot on his own is way safer. In Emirates, we took it to the next level. When a pilot needs to go to the bathroom or for a stretch or anything else, 
a male cabin crew must swap and stay in the cockpit until he returns. Male, not female, since not all women can be physically strong enough to fight off a suicidal attempt of a male pilot. If you're planning to join an airline or you're an aviation enthusiast, or you're just a curious traveler that wants to know what safety and security protocols Emirates has in place behind each phase of the flight, keep on watching. This is the technical part of the video. A flight is made out of several phases. Taxiing, takeoff, cruising, landing, and again taxiing to the airport stand. Each phase has its own protocols and its own risks. This moment is where most aircraft accidents happen. That's exactly why pilots and cabin crew are thoroughly trained with simulators every recurring year. In Emirates, this may vary for other airlines, when the last aircraft door is closed, nobody can contact or enter the cockpit unless under outstanding circumstances. This is the beginning of the so-called sterile cockpit phase, where only activities required for the safe operation of the aircraft are allowed, and all non-essential activities in the cockpit are forbidden. The sterile cockpit phase ends when the fastened seatbelt sign switches off after takeoff. Within the sterile cockpit phase, there is another phase, the no contact period. This phase starts from the moment the aircraft enters the active runway until the aircraft retracts its landing gear. This phase is the most delicate, the one that requires the most attention and focus by the pilots. No contact can be made with the pilots unless under evident catastrophic situations, and such contact must be made by your seniors, not the regular cabin crew. After the sterile cockpit phase, passengers are free to move around provided that the seatbelt sign is switched off. The crew can commence the service, and the communications between the cockpit and rest of the crew is now allowed. Once the aircraft levels out in altitude and reaches cruising speed, we can consider ourselves in the cruising phase, which is the least dangerous or delicate part of the flight. When landing, we have the whole set of rules we just explained in a reversed order. The sterile cockpit phase starts when the seatbelt sign switches on and ends once the aircraft reaches the airport stand and the first aircraft door is opened. The no contact period starts when the landing gear deploys until the aircraft has vacated the active runway. If you find this video cool, leave a like. It's going to help us a lot. Thanks. Now, when do you think a pilot can go for a stretch? In what phase can he enjoy his meal or go to the toilet? Naturally during the cruising phase, which is the longest and easiest part of the flight. A pilot may choose to eat his meal in the cockpit or in the galley nearest to him. I'm not sure if he's allowed to eat outside of the cockpit, but that's what I've witnessed, so I guess it's not much of a big deal. If the pilot wishes to eat in the cockpit, a cabin crew member will take the meal to the pilot in the cockpit and pass it to him on the window side. Now why is that? Can you guess it? Write it in the comments and let's see if you guessed it right. Alright, so the reason behind it is that in the event of some turbulence or just a little bit of clumsiness, if any food or liquid were to fall, it wouldn't fall over the controls. Next to the window side, there are fewer and less important controls, while the center controls are radio panels, intercoms, locking mechanism for the cockpit doors, weather radars, and more. So you'd rather not mess those up if you can. A pilot may also go for a toilet break or a stretch in the cabin. I've seen pilots roam around in economy on an Airbus A380, going upstairs in business class and heading through first class back to the cockpit. Not sure if they're allowed to do that, but that's again what I witnessed. So here's the fun part. Pilots have fun too. In almost every airline, they read magazines in the cockpit, they read newspapers, play games on their phones, watch Netflix on their tablets, record videos of landing and takeoff. These activities aren't allowed, but pilots are very discreet and respectful, and most importantly, they don't backstab each other. If one wants to use his device, the other one will shut up about it. The cabin crew? <laughs> Forget it. The more you report, the happier the company apparently is. We did a video about the backstabbing culture in Emirates. Have a look by clicking this link in the upper right hand corner. It's quite interesting. I remember I was a lounge operator in business class on an Emirates flight. I was preparing cocktails for passengers. There was a moment of silence where no passengers were awake and I was completely alone in the lounge. A captain, a friend of mine, made a PA and called me by name several times. He was faking another voice so I couldn't understand what was going on and who it was. He and the first officer were having fun in the cockpit checking my reactions in the lounge. I had no idea PAs could be done in the business class lounge only. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, right? 
why would Airbus install this feature on their aircraft? Well, these tricks are funny and they make your flights interesting. So I just hope it happens to you too once you join. All right, we're going to tell you now the story of that cabin crew that prevented a catastrophe thanks to her quick actions and good judgment. Let us know your stories in the comments below if you have any. We'd love to know. I honestly can't remember whether this happened on one of my flights, if it happened on an Emirates flight or on a Ryanair flight, but I'm sure it happened and that it didn't happen just once. The aircraft was reaching the active runway preparing for takeoff. All passengers were seated, cabin crew too. We're in the no contact period where communication with the cockpit can't be made unless in extreme emergencies. One of the cabin crew looked out of the window and saw residual ice contamination on the wing. The cabin crew broke the rule and called the flight deck bypassing her seniors to stop the takeoff roll. Later on, after investigating the wing, pilots and engineers established that if she hadn't taken such action, the aerodynamics of the wing wouldn't have kept the aircraft airborne, causing either a crash or the necessity to quickly return to the airport. You might not know this, but when an aircraft takes off for an international flight, it's fully loaded with fuel. There's a maximum allowed weight for the aircraft to land with. If it exceeds it, the landing gear will break upon touchdown. That means that if you experience any emergency upon takeoff, once you're in the air, you cannot land unless you get rid of your fuel. This process is called fuel jettison, where the pilots dump the fuel in the air to lower the aircraft's weight. It happened to me once, but that's something I'll cover on another video. Wait for it, it's gonna be very cool. So subscribe if you want. If you know little about the way we deal with totally drunk passengers, check this video out. This other video explains to you what happens if you don't obey us on board. And finally, this other video talks about the backstabbing culture and bullying in Emirates. I hope you enjoyed this video. I shall see you on our next one.